Hey there, it's Crafty Jenna Bug. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, I've taken a little hiatus from making videos this year. Um, so this is my first video of 2024. I decided to dye some paper with onion skins. I've watched a few different videos on how to do this and I think I've got a good enough grasp. It's similar to the tea dyeing and coffee dyeing, but here's what we're gonna do. I've been saving up a quart sized jars worth of onion skins and I'm gonna put them in this pot. It's about a two and a half quart pot. All right, I took my quart jar of onion skins and I put them in this pot. Uh, I've been saving these skins for a fair, for a couple of months, um, every time I cut up an onion, I pull the outer layers of skin, just the papery bits off, and put them in this jar. None of the white bits made its way in here. Just the outer couple of layers of paper type uh, layers. And I'm going to cover this with water, just, just to cover the skins. All right, I put enough water in here so that when I push down on the onion skins, there's about an inch of headspace. So they're, they're floating. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, uh, I didn't use an exact measurement, but this pot is a two, two and a half quart pot, and it's not full. So I would say I've got about a quart and a half of water in here to a quart jar stuffed so full of onion skins I couldn't get any more in. So I'm going to bring this up to a boil and once it achieves that, set it down to a simmer and let it cook for about an hour. I'll give you the exact timing uh, of how long it cooks once it's done. Y'all, this hasn't even come to a boil yet and look at that gorgeous color. I am so excited about this. I have not attempted to dye, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful color. I haven't attempted to use onions to dye paper before, so this is my first foray into this. But man alive, I'm already loving it. Not even a minute after I took that last clip, it started boiling. So I turned it all down, pushing these onion skins back into the water because they decided to rise up. And now it's just gonna simmer. I'm gonna set the uh, timer for an hour and we'll be back. Y'all, it has been a whopping eight minutes since I set the timer. Look at the, how dark this is. Let me get a white spoon. So this spoon is off-white, but look at that gorgeous color. I'm so excited. All right, while the onion water is steeping, doing its thing, I wanted to gather some things to dye with it. And for starters, I just have some plain copy paper. I've also pulled out some cardstock. It's a, uh, what was the weight? 199 GMS, GSM? Whatever that is. It's called heavyweight, but it's still pretty thin and can be run through the printer. I have a couple of sheets of watercolor paper. I really just want to see how this liquid gets soaked up and how it alters all the different things. So watercolor paper, I have a few coffee filters that I will just flatten out. I have some paper doilies of various sizes. I have a piece of coloring book paper. And I have some fabric. I have this old napkin I found at a thrift store. A cute little design down here. I want to use that. I want to make a bundle. I want to do individual pages and I want to make a bundle. Um, tied up and see how it absorbs everything. So I've got that. 
I have some thin white lace trim. You can't see what it is. There we go, some thin white lace trim. I ripped a piece of fabric off of an old um, uh, baby dress. Neighbor was getting rid of some fabrics. I have a long strip of off-white thicker fabric. I'm going to use that to tie the bundle together. I have this very, very discolored little dress, I guess a christening dress, but it has all this beautiful lace on the bottom and I wanted to trim that off. This dress is ripped in a lot of places and it was also in the same bin with that fabric and some lace that I have. That's a chunk of watercolor paper. Um, so I'm going to cut the lace trim off of it and use it to potentially make indentations. I have this lace I'm also going to do the same with. I want to get some of this pattern in the die, or on the paper in the die. And I have this crocheted piece as well that I want to use for imprints. I think I might also get some fern leaves to put in here and see how that alters things. I've, I've got, I want to do a lot of paper dyeing and altering and things like that. I just, I'm very curious to see how all of this goes. So my bundle, I don't want it to be too big or thick because I'm wrapping it in this napkin. So I want it to be, you know, what is that, like six, seven inches? Seven inches tall, roughly. So I need my pages to be somewhat smaller. So to start my bundle, I'm going to, this I'm going to do flat. I'm just going to fold my paper in half. And then I want to layer some of this stuff in it. All right, I just ran outside real quick and I grabbed a couple of different things. I've got some dried oak leaves. I have some fresh green oak leaves. I have a few fern fronds grow along the back of my house. And I have some privet, Chinese privet. It's just starting to um, do its thing. And let's see, I've got this cardstock. I think what I will do I will just wrap the cardstock in there. I'll wrap that in the cardstock. And let's stick some lace around it. Cool. Not lace, what is that? That's doily. <laughs> and then I will take a paper clip. Actually, I will stick brown leaf on one side, and I will stick a green leaf on the other, and then I will paper clip this together. There we go. So that is together. And then I will take some of this copy paper. Oh, it smells so good. It's privet. It's invasive, but it smells really good. <laughs> the privet, I am going to stick in there like that. And then just fold it in half. Now this is all experimental. <laughs> I feel the need to say that. I 
no idea if this will even work, let alone if it will work the way I want it to. Okay, and then let's get my bundle together. So all of that I want to go in here. That, yeah, that'll work. I can just wrap it. We'll see how that goes. So that's one bundle ready to go in the water. Let's see what that does. That's another bundle. Well, let's wrap that one in some lace maybe. No, that'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, so that's two bundles. I think that should be fine for the bundles. Maybe every, oh wait, I wanted to do these. Some of these things I will just lay in the water to see how they do. All right, those pieces of lace I will dye separately. Everything else I'm going to just lay in the water as it is. So let's mosey back onto the kitchen and we'll get this situated. It has been 45 minutes and this is the color I have now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. That is gorgeous. It is dark. Let's see what it looks like in the white. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. All right, I have a eight and a half by 11 um, baking pan. It's about an inch, inch and a half deep. And I am going to use this strainer. That is a lot of liquid. I might reserve some of that. Yeah, that's gonna overflow when I start putting things in it. And that is really hot still. Let me let that cool for a bit and then I will take some of it out. I came to a conclusion. One, I had too much liquid for this pan. Two, my bundles have greenery in them and I don't want that to... I want this to be like a trial run kind of thing. Like what color do I get when I use just yellow onion skins to dye paper. So this will be the unsullied just onion paper water. And then over here, I will put my bundles in this pan. Um, it's a seven by 11 casserole dish. And that way, since they have leaves and things in them, this will be the what will happen if I add greenery tester kind of thing. And I'll stick this on top. Look at how much that's soaking up already. I love it. I love it. Okay. So that is in there. You can already see a little discoloration starting. That's exciting. All right, now back over to this one. And this one, I'm just going to try not to lose my camera. There we go. In this one, let's lay that on top. Why not? Maybe I should have flipped them. Anyway, I added that greenery on top. Maybe I should use some weights to hold it down underneath. Come on, behave. All right. So for this one, we're just going to start layering in some paper. I'm going to start with watercolor paper. Ooh, it already picked up a little color. It's hard to see. Even just touching it with my wet fingers, I get cool marks on it. I think that 
is enough. Awesome. <laughs> I'm dying my, my kitchen towel. Awesome. Fantastic. It's working. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to let these sit for quite a while. Um, that's that one. This one is already this gorgeous color. I don't know that this will even show up or if it will discolor. I'm going to come along every so often and just kind of smack it down a little more. Oh, peek at that. Peep it. So, we're going to let this steep a while. Let's, um, actually, I'm going to, no, that's too big. Let's fold it. It's just a piece of cardstock on top. Kind of floop it down. Okay. All right then, that's what we've got going on with both of these. I'm gonna let them sit for quite a while before I go lay them out in the sun. I might let them sit overnight even though it's nine o'clock in the morning, but this is where we are. I'll let you see them when they're all done. All right, these have been soaking overnight. It's been 23 hours. I probably overdid it on the soak time. Things got busy yesterday and I didn't have the chance to um, take care of these sooner. So we're going to go outside and lay these out on the back patio and let them dry in the sun. So these have dried. I let them dry in the sun for a few hours um, and let's see how they turned out. Cool, cool. A little lighter in the middle, but I love it. This one, this little chunk, same. A little lighter on this side, I think modeled very orange here awesome oh it's just four <laughs> very yellow compared to the brown over here a little bit of um, watercolor paper that was left over from ripping the pages out and then this is what I used to tie one of those bundles together. It's got some lighter areas, which is fine. Very cool. Go in my scraps. Here we've got the napkin I used to tie the, or to wrap the bundle in. Here's the napkin I used to wrap the bundle in. Very cool. On the other side. Nice little piece of fabric for something, some sort of future project. The coffee filters, oh, another little piece of fabric stuck in the coffee filters, came from that baby dress. A little bit of lace, very yellow. This lace didn't dye very well, but I still like how distressed looking it became. You can see some of the 
edges dyed a little bit better. Paper doily. This one, <laughs> sadly, saw better days. But it's still cool. It'll still get used. More of that lace. Again, it's darker on the edge here. But there was some dirt that blew on these. The coloring page looks really cool. Another doily. This one fared better than its counterpart. This didn't die too much. I mostly just wanted to see if it would leave some sort of impression on the papers. Just get the dirt off of here. Okay. Now on to the pages. This one's dirty. It's a bit sandy. Okay, cool. Very neat. I love, I love how some of it didn't quite die in places. This one was folded. It turned out really cool. Some drops. More copy paper. This one had, I think it had the paper clip there. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the paper clip color. That might have had, I think that had one of the branches in it. Yeah, you can see some of the coloration. This was part of the cardstock, some of the doily that was on it. Cardstock in a separate pile. Another piece of copy paper. It was folded, so it got a little darker in here. It was really cool. I don't know where that circle came from, but I'm not complaining. There was a doily on this as well, and you can see some of the coloration. This is watercolor paper. And I don't know what these black marks are, but I think they're really cool. I might end up scanning some of these before I use them so that I can use them as backgrounds in potential digital images in the future. But this one, tur this turned out really, really cool. I'm gonna dye some more watercolor paper in the future. More cardstock. It had things laid on it. Much more yellow on the back. Very cool. Another piece of cardstock that had the lace laying over it. That had this laying over it, it looks like. And some of these, I took the lace out when I was unpacking um, these and laying them out to dry. I sometimes laid lace over it to dry. And I think that's what happened here. And all along this corner, I had another paper overlapping while it dried, which altered the color. And again, so yellow on the back. All these little lines. This is so cool. More copy paper. So yellow. I wonder which side was laying against the concrete. I'm not sure. This one's really cool. It had some air bubbles trapped in the dye, it looks like. Yeah. That's really cool. Man, I'm gonna have to scan so many of these. <laughs> the cardstock seemed to become more yellow than brown, which is really neat. These are so cool. That had lace laying across it right here. I don't know if you can see that, the little discolorations. That's so neat. A little strip of cardstock, more copy paper. This had something laying across it and some lace. More of that lace it looks like. 
or the crocheted pieces, potentially. They were flat on one side, yeah. Really cool. I love, I don't know if you can even see it. Let's see. I love all of these little, like, brown lines. It looks like sediment lines. Let's see, can I get some better lighting? Oh yeah, there we go. Like the little sediment lines all in here. That's my favorite. It's copy paper. This is cardstock that was folded and there was a paper clip here. It's so neat that it's different colors on different sides. It must have been the sun. More of those sediment lines. One got a little folded. Again, pretty neat. Copy paper. This one ripped, which is no big deal. You can see the paper clip mark right here. So yellow on this side. I love it. And it was folded at an angle so the paper clip marks line up here and here. That's funny. More cardstock. It had crocheted lace laying across it. Oh, so yellow. That is so wild. That is interesting. More paper clip marks. some texture in it from the lace. Another copy paper. This one had, has a, uh, this one had greenery in it. You can see where it was laying. That's where this was paper clipped down. That's funny. This one's really neat. This is almost like tea dye. I love the sediment lines. That is so cool. The air bubbles. Looks like rips. I might have had... Did I have a plant laid there? This one had the doily. You can kind of see part of it. And the lace. This one had the fern leaf. You can make it out. That's so neat. Oh, that's not cardstock, it's copy paper. And the last page here. So this was a really fun experiment. And not only did I get the one pot of dye. I used those same onion skins and steeped more dye with them. And so here, this was round two. Um, round two, I accidentally let sit for about five hours. I started it, boiled it for about an hour, and then left it to steep off the heat for about five hours before I came back to it. And this is how dark it turned out. So then I took those same onions again and said, let's try a third try. And then I got this color and it is, it steeped for, a, it was on the heat for about an hour and then steeped for an hour. So those same onion skins could be used multiple times to dye. And I'm going to use, I'm going to try out these too. Let's get you a comparison. Now this is frosted and this is not. So um, this is more just showing the difference in coloration. In the future video, I will use both of these to dye more paper. I'm having so much fun dyeing paper. I think I will end this here. This is this has been a fun experiment. 
all these different things I dyed with onion paper and how they reacted. This is quite surprising to me how yellow this is. Um, yeah, so I do apologize for how long it's been since I have made a video. I'm still in the process of trying to get this craft room organized. We've been um, getting some shelves built in another room so that I can organize better in here and it's almost come to fruition so it's it's been a little minute life keeps throwing things at us and um, it's just taken a while so I do plan to start posting again probably not as regularly as I was I got a little burned out last year with the whole um, challenge I set for myself with the um, junk journals a month but I I do miss making videos, just not at that pace. <laughs> I thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you use um, natural items to dye paper and fabrics, I want to know. Tell me what you use. Um, if you've made videos showing how you do it, share them with me. I love watching craft videos on YouTube. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.